In this video, we're having a look at Affinity Publisher uh, exporting to PDF designed for Kindle, that's KDP, in easy steps. So you can publish your book. Now, setting up for KDP, starting from your book in Word to Publisher to KDP. So let's get straight into it. I showed you how, in a previous video, right, how to set up your preset. Now those settings there, if you copy them faithfully, you'll have a preset that you can use for an ebook, any ebook. They're all the same size because it doesn't matter what size your page is, the ebook device will reformat it to suit itself. So you just need a basic setting that the PDF will look good in. Remember, minimal formatting, no drop caps. No text behind images, no text on images, no images behind images. Anything like that will really mess up the resulting ebook. You actually don't even need a master page. That's how easy it is. Although we do have one showing there. The document, the preset's already given the document 50 pages. You can adjust that later. You can add or subtract pages as you need. Now, put in an image placeholder for the cover. That's on page one. Don't worry about the master page. We're not going to use that. Now, Kindle covers are a default certain size. And that's usually 1875 by 2775 pixels. Now, that's not quite the size of that page. You can stretch the placeholder to the boundaries if you like or just keep it within the margins. KDP will adjust it to where you want it. And in either case, it will look good on your device. But you can see there, I've adjusted it right out to the edge. There's no need to worry about trim or bleed. It's a digital book. There is no bleed. There is no cut off. The printers won't cut off half your picture. And KDP will crop it to so that it sits on the page nicely. So whatever you see there, you will see on the device. Now let's put the text in. A good Kindle book has no images. The text is reflowable. No fancy fonts, no drop caps, nothing to mess up formatting. So don't have a highly formatted Word document. It will do you no good in an e-book. E now, insert your first text holder page. So you only need to do one page. You could have a book of 200 pages if you like, but you only need to put in the first text holder on, in this case, page two. Let's insert some text and, it, and we will invoke auto flow when we do it. Now there's my word text file and I want to auto flow into the document. You can see I've dragged the uh, the file window in there and I've got my file in highlight and if you look closely you'll see it's a Word document. I've dragged that Word document, just drag it into the first text frame and right at the top of the text frame you'll see what's on the first page. And what's on the first page? Just my name. Very small lettering there, Robert Chalmers. But you will see the text flow options are now two little red triangles. And therein lies the trick. Now, I've said this before in previous videos. When you click on the lower red triangle after inserting your text in page one, make sure you hold down the shift key and then click on the red triangle. If you inadvertently click it first, just undo and try it again. Hold the shift key down and click on the red triangle. It will add pages for you as well. And there's 53 pages in this case. And you can see the line between the text files. It's automatically inserted text frames, automatically inserted the text and floated across the pages. You don't have to cut and paste and worry about it all. You flow it into the document from your Word document. I'm showing you chapter one there hmm, because I can. It's just I've moved through the text pages, I've moved through the pages there and highlight chapter one. Now for this book I haven't worried about a table of contents or anything like that. 
but check for widows and orphans. That's like blank pages left over from repositioned text. And you can see on the bottom of the left-hand column there, there's a blank page. You just get rid of those or move them to where you want or put something on them. There's always a little bit of homework to do. Now you're all ready to export. And as I've said in previous videos, use digital high quality. If you have table of contents and you have URL links, links to other things, unless you use the digital high quality, they won't work. There are a couple of others, but that's in a previous video anyway. But take it from me, just use digital high quality and you've got no problems. With the preview option in export turned on, once you export it, it will pop up in Adobe Reader. You can now see your finished PDF, very nice. And you can scroll through it, look for mistakes, look for errors, look for things you've got to go back and correct. Now the next step is to open Kindle Create on your Mac. It's freely downloadable, download it from Kindle. It may even be on the App Store, I think. And it's free from the App Store almost certainly. Now select the option shown. There are three options there. You're not using any of them on a plain simple book like this one. Use the bottom one. Choose the file and it's a PDF file. You don't get any choice, it's a PDF. Find your PDF that you just created. And in this case, Marriage in a Cold Climate. There's the exported file from publisher you can see it's in the publisher folder and it's called marriage in a cold climate open that and check it through that's in kindle create and it comes up you can see the left hand side there it's got the cover the pages and so forth and so on so what you have so far is a pdf file that's a faithful representation of what you exported now check through your document carefully to make sure it's all there, everything's in the right place. And as I said, we haven't worried about a table of contents in this, 53 pages, it's too short. You don't really need a table of contents. Now, you're ready to publish, right? Now, it doesn't actually publish it. So it's okay to go to File and Publish. What it does is save the project. It saves it as a KPF file. And I've saved that again in the Affinity Publisher folder where I can find it later quite easily. And it's also on the cloud, so it's well backed up. Open the folder and use Kindle Preview to check it out. Now this is another program you download from Kindle, from KDP. Kindle Preview. Open it in Kindle Preview and it will show you just what it looks like on any device that it's capable of being read on. So you can check desktop, uh, Kindle Fire, Kindle Reader, Kindle White, any of the Kindle options are there and you can see what your document looks like on them. This is the reason you don't put formatting in your Word document or your publisher document because the Kindle readers have their own formatting. Clients can enlarge or shrink text, they can change the fonts, they can do all sorts of things with it, so whatever you put in there won't matter. But what you're left with, open the folder to see what you have. You've got a KPF file, a KC file, that's the actual project file, and the PDF file that you originally created. So when you upload your KPF file to Kindle, you'll end up with a Mobi file on Kindle, which as the author, you can then download if you like. So you'll end up with a Mobi, a KPF, which is only openable in um, Kindle Preview, and the PDF, which of course you can distribute as well. PDF files open in just about anything. Open the KPH file in Kindle Previewer. That probably should be KPF, which is also downloadable. And in the Previewer, you can see it there. The device type, ta tablet, 
uh, fonts, zoom, so you can do any of that changing fonts. That's the front cover you're looking at there. The Mobi, the Kindle actual file, is only available after publishing on Kindle. Now, which is what you want to do, right? You want to publish it. There's no point in producing the book if you're not going to publish it at all. And now this one is from the original, 19, uh, no, 20, 2018, I think I put that up there. Yes, there it is, 10th of July. That's to show you that it, you can end up with a Mobi file. So, go get a Kindle publishing account. You may have a converter that works. Most don't, as I mentioned there, where you can change your KPF or PDF file. It will convert it to Mobis, to EPUBs, to HTML, to anything you like. But unless it's a very simple file, forget it. Most just don't work properly, sorry. They look good, but, you know, don't go paying for it because sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. 100% complete. Thank you for watching and please remember to subscribe to my channel. That's the end of Affinity Publisher and its relationship to KDP.